NCAA basketball totals for Sunday, December 18th. We got three games on the card today. We also have our NBA segment out there as well. Winning day yesterday, going two and one in both the NBA and NCAA hoops. Let's see if we can continue some uh, some momentum from that. Again, this is our uh, our NCAA total segment, like our NBA segment, where we check out what the odds makers have for the final score of a game. And we see if we can beat that. Over or under. Currently, we have a winning record in both the NBA and uh, NCAA basketball, not by a large margin, though, not by where we want to be. So let's continue to trudge away and see if we can go ahead and, uh, you know, increase that margin before the end of the year. Um, don't forget to check out SBR for all the picks, odds, sports books. Uh, everything's all there uh, at our website. So be sure to check us out. Again, this is our total segment. Let's break them down. Here we go. The first one we got is Gonzaga and Tennessee. This game's in Nashville. And Gonzaga's actually a double-digit favorite, which is kind of surprising. Right now, Ozmakers have it at 146, and I'm going over this total. All my NCAA picks are over today, and all my NBA picks are under, if you want to find that kind of interesting. just the way it works out sometimes. Um, I think it's going to be pretty up-tempo, and I think that 146 is about right, but I like Gonzaga to score tonight against a Tennessee team under Bruce Pearl that really likes to get up and down. Now, Mark Few at Gonzaga... You know, what does Gonzaga remind me of? They remind me a little bit of like kind of like a Toronto Raptors type of team or Atlanta Hawks, something like that, where they can really score, but you kind of forget how good they are defensively. What do I mean? Check it out. They're averaging 82.7 points per game. That ranks 27th in the country, but they're allowing just 63.1 points per game. That ranks 33rd in the country. So they can do it on both ends of the floor. How they have not made it to, you know, a, a, that final four status seems like they're every year everyone thinks they're going to be this is their year this is their year and they just don't get there um but they're good this is a really good gonzaga team and they can flat out score tennessee loves to get up and down that's bruce pearl we know we're going to get that from tennessee we saw that against north carolina they really gave the tar heels a run for their money but i think they caught north carolina in a pretty good spot right there um and they didn't get up and down quite as much as i thought they would north carolina didn't score nearly as much as i thought as i anticipated but i think Gonzaga's going to be able to do that in this matchup. Tennessee's averaging 78.6 points per game, but they're allowing 71.7. That's not really good. That ranks about the middle of NCAA hoops. When we talk about their percentages, though, both these teams can score, and they both get up and down. Gonzaga, they're averaging 48.3% overall. That's one of the better averages in the country. They're 30th in shooting efficiency and 36th in effective field goal percentage, and they shoot uh, over 38% from from distance. Tennessee, not bad either. They're shooting... uh, 52% 52% on their two-point shots. They're shooting over 46% overall. It's a good Tennessee team. They're not bad. You know, they could be pretty scrappy there in that uh, SEC. Defensively, although Gonzaga is allowing just 63.1 points per game, which is really good, they're allowing opponents to get up 63.2 attempts per game. That ranks outside of the top 300 teams. They'll, they have no problem getting up and down the floor. This is a team that likes to get out in transition, to get out and run, and they're going to go ahead, and they're going to do that. And you can tell. I mean, they, they share the ball. They're averaging over 16 assists per game. That ranks in the top part uh, of NCAA hoops. Tennessee's not bad as well as in that category. They share the ball. They shoot the ball. Both these teams get up and down. I think they're getting over that 146. This is going to be a really fun one to watch. I think Tennessee can give a little bit of a run for their money, but that Gonzaga team, they're tough. I can't wait until they face St. Mary's. That's going to be a fantastic game. I'm, I have that one circled already. That's going to be a really good one. I'm going over that 146. Next one up. This one I would have taken under last year, but I'm going over this year. And that's Clemson and Alabama over the 133. Now, Clemson's going a lot faster, and they're scoring at a much higher clip than they did, la- than they did last year. Did I say this year last year? Okay, this year is what I really meant to say in case I, I messed that up. Clemson, um, they could score. You know, They have one of the best uh, players in the ACC in uh, – Oh my gosh, yeah, I just forgot his name. <sighs> I might have to look that up real quick. Uh, let me look it up. I know, I know Brownridge is their, uh, or Brownell, excuse me, is their head coach. But I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to find his name because I'm going to go crazy if I don't. I know who it is on the tip of my tongue, but he's a stud. He's one of the best players in the ACC. And uh, this Clemson team could flat out score. Let's look at some of their games recently. They put up 93, 90, 85, and 83. They put up 60 against Nebraska. But that's a Nebraska team that goes really, really slow. Alabama is not really up-tempo. However, 133, I think, is just too low for this matchup. And I'm going to have to look up that guy's name. Because I am a human being and I make mistakes. 
but I've got to make sure I get this right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I get this right for you guys. So the way I look at it, statistically, I've already looked at the stats, but I'll uh, let me run them over again with you guys. Um, you know, we got Clemson right now. They're allowing 64.7 points per game. Really good defensively, but they're scoring 80.1. That's shocking for Clemson. Alabama, they're uh, averaging about 69 points per game, and they're allowing 62.6. So I can see how an odds maker set this so low. Because traditionally, like Clemson's a really locked down defensive team. However, they're not like that this year. They're really getting up and down the floor. Um, and I think that's what's going to happen. I mean, comparative to, comparatively speaking to last year is really how I want to say it. I mean, they're not, I mean, they're not Duke you know, as far as tempo and stuff like that. But they really like to get up and down, you know. So, uh, Blossom game. Gosh, Jared Blossom game. I knew that. So sorry about that, guys. Yeah, Blossom game. That guy is a flat-out stud. What is he averaging right now? Let's take a look at his numbers real quick. And he is averaging 18.6 points per game. Yeah, that that guy's arguably the best player in the ACC. He's really good. Um Sometimes you just forget their names. Just the way it goes sometimes. But I'm not, I'm going to keep on with this video and just let you know that I'm human and I make mistakes, as you guys already know. Okay. Now, Alabama has been very interesting this year. Against Oregon, we're talking a really low score, 65-56. But Oregon's a really, really good defensive team. Now, at Texas, they went 77-68 in a loss. I don't know if they can beat Clemson, man. Clemson, they're pretty good. Don't sleep on the Tigers. They're going to shock some teams in the ACC, as they seem to always do every year, especially at home. But Alabama's not bad offensively. You know, right now they're shooting uh, – excuse me, I had Clemson up there. Right now, I mean, they're shooting 44% from the floor. Clemson's shooting 44% from the floor. Um, their shooting efficiency is not bad. They're shooting over 51% on their two-point shots. Same same goes for uh, – no, Clemson's at 50.5% of their two-point shots. But tempo-wise, that's what we got to get to. Clemson's getting up 61.2 attempts per game. That's well above what they were last year. Well above. Now, Alabama doesn't go at a really good clip, but they are averaging over 55 attempts per game, which is not really super slow. And uh, Clemson's going to go ahead and allow that sort of tempo as well. Overall, you know, that 133, it kind of looks, it looks just about right, but I think they get over. Simply for the fact Clemson is going to be able to score off this Alabama team. And I think Alabama, this is going to be a lot more up-tempo than I think uh, people anticipate. Because you think Alabama and Clemson, you think more like a like a, a Virginia, um, uh, Old Dominion type of game. You know, something like that where they're just really, really slow. And I, I just, that's, I don't think that's going to happen in this matchup. I think they're going to go ahead and they're going to score some points. So I'm going to go ahead and back over that 133. Wow, I really grinded that one out. Sorry, guys. All right, here we go. Last one up. Northeastern versus Michigan State. I'm going over the 139 and a half. Pretty decent Northeastern team. They've actually, they've they've had quite a few losses, but they've been competitive. I mean, we look at Northeastern recently. I mean, you know, the games they've lost by, they've lost three out of their last four games by a combined 11 points. You know, not really playing any tough competition. Uh, they did lose to Harvard 86-80. to 80. Michigan State has perplexed me this year because they're so young. But they could score. And they move the ball pretty well. Right now, they're averaging over 19 assists per game. There's another guy, Tom Izzo, uh, who really adjusts to his personnel really, really well. He's got some athletes. They're young. But you watch. Come tournament time, they'll be ready like they always are. Northeastern, they're averaging 73.2 points a game. Really good mid-major. Michigan State, they're averaging 72.2. Michigan State's giving up 67.7. That's a little bit too much for a Michigan State team. But Northeastern, they're allowing 72.3. Shooting-wise, both of them are tough. You got Northeastern, they're shooting 46.4% from the floor, over 52% on their two-point shots. That's a good shooting team, and over 36% from distance. Michigan State, not bad at all. On their two-point shots, over 54%. Very solid, and they're shooting over 47% from the floor. Tempo, they're not fast. That's kind of a concern. Neither team really get up, gets up and down the floor. I'm not going to talk about the numbers. They rank outside the top half of NCAA hoops as far as uh, a tempo and adjusted tempo. However, all that being said, there's some talent on both ends. They both have good shooting percentages, and I just like the way this matches up. I think they're going to get over this. Uh, I think they're going to score over 140. So I'm going to go over that 139 and a half. Um, you know, Northeastern, they put up, they've had uh, several games here. Well, they've been well over this number. And Michigan State, I think they're going to be happy to go ahead and get up and down the floor. So look for both these teams to score. 
and uh, to get over 140. I think they're going to get there. So pretty good matchup right there. Northeastern's a pretty good mid-major. Usually they're pretty scrappy. All right, let's break it down one more time. Really grinded that one out. Sorry, when I got caught on that uh, Clemson-Alabama game, I forgot Fr- Fr- Blossom game's name. And, uh, you know, hey, I want to look that up. So I- I'm sorry I'm not going to redo this video, but, uh, you know, it, it- – Sometimes it, it's just better to be honest, I, I think. I think it's always better to be honest. So, you know, I'm not perfect, but uh, but yeah, so that's his name. All right, I like that over. Gonzaga, Tennessee over the 146. We got Clemson, Alabama over the 133, and Northeastern, Michigan State over the 139 and a half. Those are NCAA basketball picks, <sighs> and I wish you luck on your picks today. Go to sbrodds.com. Browse, compare, and shop live odds available at top online sportsbooks. 